Well, the mask hasn't just slipped, it's completely off. You can see all the protests all around the world, the pro-Palestinian protests, the anti-Israeli protests. Who are these people? What's motivating them? And what is the message that it is sending? Hello, I'm Adrienne Batra. With me are Brian Lilly and Warren Kinsella. Warren, I, I say that the mask is just off because I have never seen and we've heard about the anti-Semitism, the bubbles just around the surface, but it's just there now. It's on university campuses, it's on the streets of Toronto, it's on the streets of Montreal and New York, you know, Australia, everywhere we are seeing this. And you do have to wonder, are, are these ill-informed kids, are they, are, are they just misguided? What is happening? Well, you know, we call them places of higher, higher learning, but what's happening there is stomach churning. And so I've been digging into it uh, to research a column I've got coming out in our paper on the weekend. And like the thing, you know, the Gen Z, so the, the young people who are now in university and college and some kids who are in high school, like we're, as you pointed out, we're seeing walkouts, we're seeing noisy protests in support of Palestine and also very critical, and some would say anti-Semitic statements being made by these kids. Why is that happening? Bad parenting, for sure. Lousy instructors and professors, for sure. We've got lots of examples of that. But if you dig into it, as I've been doing, the, you know, the number one source of information for that young group is, is not Google. Old people like us, that's what we're, we use. The kids are using TikTok. And if you drill down further to see what's happening on TikTok is the pro-Hamas side, the pro-Palestinian side owns it. Like Israel is losing the information battle on TikTok, which is the principal source of information for young people. And I think personally, that's why we're seeing extraordinary scenes of kids who have no connection, they can barely pronounce Palestine, uh, marching and denouncing Israel, in some cases, you know, engaging in criminal behavior because Israel is losing the information war. They need to step up their game where these young people are receiving information because there's a whole generation that we are losing to the other side. Brian, I know that you have certainly for the Toronto Sun been covering a lot of these protests in person. You've gone there and, and I, I know that you haven't personally felt um, unsafe, but you know, you've been doing this a long time. You understand how to how to manage these sorts of situations. Even the walkout yesterday by, uh, or recent this week by all of those elementary school students um, and high school students, so young, um, and they're chanting this from the river to the sea. And and we all understand what that means. But give me a sense from your perspective, covering it, being on the ground. What's the, are these ill informed or are they informed or just misguided? I, I think when you're talking about the student ones, there's a lot of ill-informed people involved. Uh, but the folks that are marching up and down Bay Street in Toronto, along Yon and Bloor, uh, standing outside the Israeli consulate there, they're not ill-informed. They know what they're there for. They know what they're doing. And these are not pro-Palestinian rallies. They are pro-Hamas. When you were chanting from the river to the sea, within two days of the worst massacre of Jews since the Holocaust, you are endorsing the violence of Hamas. And at that point, that's not just a, a pro-Palestinian, I'm here for peace, I'm here for human rights. You're endorsing a terrorist organization. That has been the most disturbing to me. And as I've talked to Jewish coworkers, Jewish friends across the city, it, people I don't know have been reaching out to me as well, and they do not feel safe. So yeah. I'm not Jewish. I'm a big guy who knows how to handle himself around these types of events. But I've got Jewish Canadians across the country telling me they don't feel safe. The former head of the BC Civil Liberties Association, um, Harsha well, Walia, going on the steps of the art gallery in Vancouver and saying how beautiful it was, how inspiring it was that Palestinians learned to use hang gliders for their liberation. They use hang gliders to go into mm -hmm. the... Uh, the concert in the desert to rape and murder people. Mm -hmm. I would not feel safe if, if I were a Jew in Canada today, and that's what many are telling me. 
friends of mine who are big guys as well, in shape, not the type of person you'd mess with, they're telling me I'm looking over my shoulder. I, I'm looking out for my kids. I'm sending instructions to my kids on on how to, how to act, how to behave, what to avoid. Yeah, and then Warren, I mean, the stories that we certainly have been covering and it, they are getting more and more coverage. Um, like the, the story we did recently of uh, Jewish families who have the mezuzah on on their door on their front door, having to take them down because someone is pounding on their door and screaming um, at them for being Jewish. Uh, you know, Joe Warmington's story on that CTV news writer who recently just got fired from CTV, uh, Yard Jamal. She was the organizer of the pro-Palestinian marches out in 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 Hamilton, Halifax. Uh, you know, we're calling them out. The 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 Western University had a Muslim chaplain. He he just recently was uh, let go. So at least there is some pushback on some of these voices that think that they can just be, um, you know, anti-Semitic or um, uh, very negative towards uh, the Jewish people without impunity. There is some pushback, which is positive. But just imagine how many aren't getting pushed back. And, and I'm thinking of all those, you know, institutions of higher learning, Harvard, you know, UPenn, all these universities across Canada. What do we do about that? And that is the bigger story for me. As you guys know, I've been writing about, you know, anti-Semitism and organized hatred for more than three decades. And I've written books about it. And, um, you know, these people... Like guys, I don't know if I can say this, but I'm going to say it. They're assholes, right? We, the assholes have always been among us. You know, you're always going to get some municipal councillor who endorses Holocaust denial. You're going to get, you know, somebody who's a school board trustee who hates Jews. Like, unfortunately, those people persist. They're always there. The concern we should have is the numbers. And what I'm seeing is among young people, we are losing an entire generation. Like it, it, just think about this, October 7th, right? 1400 men, women, children, and babies as raped, murdered, tortured, like terrible documented events. It's all been, we've got proof that these things took place. Yeah. And yeah. still these kids are going and doing marches in their schools in support of Hamas, in support of this extremist organization. Well, it's a, it's a terrorist group. It's a homicidal group. And why is that happening? It's because I think we're losing them. We need to take it seriously. Israel and the supporters of Israel need to take it seriously and fight yeah. back because we can't afford to lose this generation. Brian, last word. Um, you know, the tensions in the region, of course, continue to escalate. And, you know, the United States, uh, the, 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 the military over there is, is getting um, attacks from, from, from Syria. Now they've re retaliated, but they're trying to, to make sure and, and cleave the two incidences. Now, they're not suggesting that it's part of the Israel Hamas war, that this is sep something separate. It's hard to separate the two, but that said, so the tensions are certainly getting uh, more and more intense. But on the context of what we're talking about, what's happening here, you know, we even see the NDP provincially in Manitoba, in Ontario, excuse me, you know, fighting for the soul of that party, Marit Stiles, the leader, rightfully um, expelled Sarah Jama, the MPP from Hamilton Centre, out of, out of the caucus for all of her uh, anti-Semitic commentary and her reaction after the dreadful acts of October 7th. There was a scene at Queen's Park, you know, with some of her supporters. Um, so it's it's in every institution, elected, non-elected, yep. and, and uh, organizations everywhere. And, you know, I spent a long time on the phone the other day with a, a longtime member of the NDP who has been feeling less and less comfortable over the last several years, but who I think now has finally left the party over this. Mm -hmm. Not the first time I've spoken to Jewish members of the NDP who just said, we can't take it anymore. This is a, a rift that runs right through the the Ontario NDP. Jagmeet Singh's done a better job, as Jack Layton and Tal Mulcair did before him, of tamping down on this. Uh, but Merritt Stiles, she's lost the party. She's lost her leadership, um, and, and the party's falling apart. Justin Trudeau is trying to walk that line as well, though. He's got deep divisions in his own caucus in a way that didn't exist when 
Warren was up on Parliament Hill uh, working for the Liberal Party. So this does run through all segments of society. And I think we, we have to ask serious questions, yes, for the TikTok generation, but what about the, the union leaders, the elected politicians, the others? We've got to examine ourselves and say, you know, how can you support Hamas when they promoted what they did? As Warren said, we saw the evidence because Hamas put it out there. It wasn't Israeli propaganda. I don't know how anyone can support that, but sadly, yeah. people are. Well, let us know what you think in the comments below and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and go to the TorontoSun.com. You're going to find stories and coverage you will not find anywhere else.